Hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to teach you how to make the 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 colors conjecture in Python and if you know what the colors conjecture is it's like well a, con a conjecture that basically just is this is 3x plus 1 I'm going to open my calculator to show you You can pick any positive whole number, for example, 17. If it is odd, you multiply by 3 and then add 1. If the number is even, you divide by 2. So it's 26, so it's even, divided by 2, 13 times 3 plus 1, 40 divided by 2. No, divided by 2 is 20 divided by 2 is 10 divided by 2 is 5 multiplied by 3 plus 1 16 divided by 2 8 divided by 2 4 and then here's the weird part this is the 4 2 1 loop it's an infinite loop that any positive number that has been tested so far will end up in this loop 4 2 1 because 4 divided by 2 is 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 then 1 times 3 is 3 plus 1 is 4 and then again the cycle repeats so then, many, many people, like, advise you to not try at all to try to, like, solve, to prove this conjecture true or false. It's basically just a waste of time since mathematicians have tried up to a bunch of numbers to test if it is true or, fa or false. What I mean by if it is true or false is that if it is true every single number in existence will always end up well not every single number but every single positive whole number in existence will always end in the 4 to 1 loop and if it is false there is a number that you can find that isn't nev is never gonna end up in the 4 to 1 loop so far, mathematicians have tried the numbers 2 to 68th, which might not sound as much, but if you look at the number, just like, just the big number, you can see here that this is 2 to 68th, which is... It's 295 quintillions... 147 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 179 billion, 352 million, 825,856. That's a lot of numbers, but still not even close to really finding. Like, it's, it's just we've never found a number that that like proves the conjecture either true or false and even though supercomputers might seem very powerful it's still a difficult thing to process so in conclusion 3x plus 1 like this 3x plus 1 is the most the easiest math problem no one can solve now we're gonna do that but on python so let's see here I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make a new file it's untitled right now so first I'm gonna go like saying what the what each function means as if because if you're a beginner you can like easily find out it's very it's a very easy program to make first let's make a variable 
So let's see. The variable name is gonna be uh just number. Just easy number. This Python is not like any other programming language or for example JavaScript you have to type let like this to make a new variable or var or in C plus plus or like yeah C plus plus you have to type int or float or whatever but no in Python you just have to make the variable you just have to type in the the name of it even if it hasn't been declared and then then you just well declare it you have to put an equal sign and then whatever value a string is char characters like letters and numbers a number is literally just a number that's it so what we're gonna do here is is like put in input input and then what the input input function does is ask the ask the the player or whatever you want to call it like the person who's running it to add information that hasn't been hard coded to the code so you can put info from from well, the player in this case it's going to the it's going to ask for a random whole number a random positive whole number so let's see here we are gonna type we're gonna type this type a random whole number it can be any number as long as it's positive and it's a whole number I have never tried it with the decimals but I don't know if it works so let's keep going it's a random whole number here as you can see here we have put a string inside of this function, but why? Why do you can't, why not just like use print or something? Well, it doesn't work that way. You have to use input if you wanna say something to the the player or the person who's like running it, seeing it. You have to use this if you want to like specify what you want them to type in so in this case a random whole number we put the string inside of the function it will print it and then you can type something in but wait because if you try to add to like if you try to add a number to it let's say print we print number number uh, divided by 2 let's say and then I'm gonna save it first save as what the heck is this I want my desktop python folder I'm just gonna save it as the collets conjecture I already have this here but it was like before I made this video but Let's save it. Yes. Uh, what? Don't care. Now let's run this module. What happens? Oh wait. Oh what? I think it broke. Yeah, so I'm gonna save this and then run it. If I type the random whole number, well, oops, wait, I forgot to do something. If you want it to not have to like, if you not want to type it 
the random hole number like right next to the number it just looks confusing right you can see the blue letters and stuff to like differentiate the cell it looks weird so you can either just type a space or add a new line the way you do that add a new line yes kill it you see us a backslash with an n standing for new line and then we just save this again run it yes it works now let's say uh as 17 like the example for the beginning of the video look it says type error and support operand type for divide string str for string and int for integer it's trying to divide a string by an integer and doesn't work that way right but like you might be saying why is it why why is the number you put in a string and not an integer because you can see that i cre i clearly typed in a number right it doesn't matter python will always turn the whatever you type in the input to a string so in order to fix that you just add, add another function the int function you put the input function inside of the int function and surrounded by parentheses uh, so then you can the int function turns it into an integer now let's save it and then run module what well yeah it works right i typed in the number and it could divide by two right because 3.5 times 2 is 7 and it works it just it works but now let's let's keep going we don't need this anymore so then let's make another variable counter to count the iterations it just means like how many times you've run something inside a loop so right now it's a zero because the loop doesn't even exist yet. It doesn't exist. So now, now we're gonna make it while it's a while loop. The a while loop is different than a for loop. A for loop just like runs however many times you want, but a while loop runs infinitely as long as the as the condition is true. So in this case, while while number is greater, wait, no, well while number while not number equals one, then run. What this means is it's gonna it's gonna keep running as long as the number is not one. And as soon as it reaches one, it's gonna stop and end the script. <laughs> so let's keep writing. Let's keep writing the code. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one to the counter, saying that we've started the first iteration. Then we check if the number. If number is even, if the number is even, we divide by two. We divide the number by two. So what this means, this is like the mod operator. What this does is you can put any number, in this example, a uh, two and it will check if it has a remainder and as you may know if you if you know uh, a lot of in math for example if if the remainder of anything divided by two is zero that means it's even right so yeah we're gonna divide by two or else 
if it's not if it's not even we're gonna multiply look as you can see here I've been modifying the variables but instead of just like for example if I want to add one to the counter variable I'm not just gonna oops I deleted the whole whatever I'm not just gonna make counter equals counter plus one that takes longer so I just make counter and then plus sign and then equal sign meaning to like still modify the variable and then one same thing with all these what this mean what what these symbols mean are simple plus well obviously means adding minus obviously means as well subtracting now the asterisk means multiplying and then the slash means dividing <coughs> okay now you know this just means to like find the remainder and I think that's it so let's keep going if the number is not even we will multiply by 3 then out of 1 now we are gonna print every iteration the result is space is plus you can add the plus number after a value like a string into a print function to con well I can pronounce it basically just to connect two values together and make it seem like you're saying something in one sentence and one print line so I'm not just gonna make another line for like the same print like now I'm gonna print print again the result is now number it doesn't work like that it's gonna take too long so the result is number and then plus in iteration and then another plus counter that's it but now if you save it and run it it's gonna get me an error I typed the whole number it says type error can only concatenate, concatenate strings not int to a string so basically what this means it's saying that you cannot connect an integer to a string we have seen this earlier because basically you can just can't connect them together it's it, this is how it works okay you can connect strings to integers you can like add them together or whatever so what do i do then i'm lost now what i can't keep doing this right because if the number is well a number and now and the counter is also a number but now the strings the result is and the iteration thingy are strings that means we can't keep doing this anymore because the other two values are numbers well you're wrong because if you see this function integer I told you earlier that you can turn a string into an integer using this function but well if there is a function to turn a string into an integer there has to be a function to turn an integer into a string right well of course if you saw earlier in the error if you run this in the error ss str so now 
that means the function to turn an integer into a, a string is str. As simple as that. Now let's see if it works. Let's type seven, oh what, 17. See, it works. The result is 18 iteration one. Wait, what? Wait, what did, what did it turn into 18? Oh, that's why I forgot the equal sign here. Keep doing that. So yeah, it's 52, then 26, then 13, then 40, then 20, then 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Yay, it works, but you can, you see this decimals, right? Why do you have to worry about decimals when the numbers always going to be whole either way. Just round it. You have to add another function called round. It's as easy as that. And then add the other parentheses. String. Yeah. Wait. So string and then round and then number. Like this. Yeah. Now let's run it again. <laughs> Yay, it works. The numbers are all whole numbers and our program is working correctly. And now for one last thing, we're going to add a last print function. This print function is going to say that the 4 to 1 loop has been detected. So four, for instance, like four, two, one, one, yeah, like that. Four to one loop has been detected. Program stopped. Done. Now it works. When we run it, let's see. Um, let's type a random whole number. Uh, 35 13 iterations 41 loop has been detected program stop and now we can restart it again put a an even bigger number like 2000 2379 and then it takes a bit longer but it always ends up in the 421 loop now, now, this is the actual like last thing, because if someone accidentally types instead of a number a word or something, we can we can't just detect that it will just give us an error, and that doesn't seem very understandable for some people. It might not. Some people like might not understand it. It just says invalid literal for integer with base 10 word. So then what we do to fix this is in this while loop uh, condition we put here. While the number is not equal to 1 and and it's literally just and not like uh, other like we're just like this it's just and and then and well number is not one and and the number is not a string wait Wait, 
I kind of forgot how to like detect if it's a string or not. But that's what we're here for, right? To learn. The, this function right here. Wow, this is actually like useful because we can detect if it is a decimal or a negative number, which we don't want. So we can just use this function. Let's see here. When we type it here, and is numeric. It's numeric number. Does that work? Now let's test it then. But uh, 34. What? Oh wait, do we need to like add something? Oh. Oh, that's how you do it. You don't put the variable inside of the parentheses you put it outside you think like, like separating it with a dot so instead of doing this Okay, whatever, I give up. There is no, s well, there is obviously a way to check it, but there is no simple way to check if, if it is, if it has like letters or not, but I want to make this a simple video and like, I don't want to make it too overcomplicated for like beginners and stuff. So what you can do though, is check, oh wait, what am I doing right here? is check if it is negative or not because remember it doesn't really work the the 4 to 1 it would like never stop the if if it is negative it would just never stop because there is no 4 to 1 loop and plus it would like never really reach a positive value so you you can't you just can't do it so let's run Look, this is what happens if you put a negative number without, like, yeah, if you put a negative number, it will just keep on going infinitely until it crashes sometime. It, as you can see, there's a pattern here. Like, you can see just negative 2 and negative 1, like binary, but instead of zeros and 1s, negative 2s and negative 1s. So let's uh, kill that. And then let's try another number, another negative number, like negative 184. There's also a pattern? I don't know. Let's make it, let's let it run until like 1000 iterations to see if there's a pattern or not. Okay, 9000. Boom. Okay, I don't believe there is a pattern in this number, but still, it would just keep on running infinitely anyways. So the way you can do this is by putting the end keyboard, key, I mean, uh, operator, what's it called again? The end, yeah, logical end. I don't know why it's out of keyboard. It's a keyword, that's why. And keyword or something. I, I kinda mix up my words sometimes. Anyways, you put and and then if the number 
if less than wait no if the end number is greater oh wait I don't need to put an end I literally just need to do this while the number is greater than one keep running and then wait what oh my god and then if what do you do I don't, oh my god my head is cloudy today and it was even and, and if the number if less than and the number is not less than one it can be less than one because if, if it is zero then it, it doesn't make any sense okay if you multiply anything by zero it would just be zero you would divide anything it would just be zero the only thing that could actually get to zero is the addition like plus one but it doesn't work like it's okay it's just kind of useless so now it doesn't work but it doesn't really make any sense either that it just is the 421 loop has been detected when it doesn't even run right so if the number if the number was number is less than one make a new variable called negative and set it to true or else set negative to false now at the end at the very end of the script we had, a, we had another if so if negative print number can not be negative Okay, that's it, right? Now we we put an else. And then we put a tab into this so it like works. And then boom, that should be it. That should be the whole program. So look, the number is set to your input, then I just does that, make a new variable if it is negative as you said it's a true and then keep doing like the divide and multiply and then print and then print again and save and save it now i'm gonna put random home oh what bro i'm so dumb I forgot I have to put this remember okay you have if it is a boolean value you have to put it in uppercase the first letter has to be uppercase or it wouldn't work so yeah it's pretty satisfying right it detected now if we run again uh how to restart can you restart without like having to close it 
restart I don't think you can whatever let's run it again does it work with a negative number it shouldn't what the heck and it was negative 53 and the number cannot be negative okay it works now let's put like an in like a really big number like I'm literally just mashing my keyboard here. I don't get it. Like, I'm literally typing numbers. Why does it show up? Why do two letters show up? Like, seriously. Wait, there's an O there. Stop the O's. What? My hands are not even remotely close to the, to any letter. I don't get why is it so broken. It, it is definitely not. That was definitely it. What the heck? This keyboard is broken. I'm not even pressing anything. Okay. I'm just gonna put a big number. One, two, three, four, five. Like this. Let's hope it doesn't crash. Oh wow, you can see how it keeps getting smaller and smaller. And then as it gets smaller, it gets slower as well. Like the number gets slow, get the number gets smaller but slower, and then let's try it again with an even bigger number. Wait, what's the largest number? What's the largest integer Python can handle? Oh my God! What the heck? Nine. What is that, the quintillion? What, integers are unlimited in size? Wait, how have I been? Why C, C plus, is actually like C++ plus plus worse than Python or something? Because... Wait, what? Because in C++, plus plus, I don't know if you any of you guys like know, but in C++, plus plus, the number I'm pretty sure it cannot be larger than like wait a second I have it in my like my tiny notebook I'm gonna look for it I found that I totally did not like make a mess at all. Okay, here it is. I have put it, put it here somewhere. Okay, so look, apparently the the max number an integer can hold in C++, like the usual limit, is from negative 159. Wait, what is this? Wait, it's 100. Uh, negative 159 million three hundred three hundred eighty three thousand five hundred fifty three to uh, a number is like two zero zero three seven six four two zero five two six eight nine six six three because look the short can like have like two bytes or sixteen bits four bytes or thirty two bits and int and long eighty eight Eight bytes or sixty-four bits, and long, long at least eight bytes or sixty-four bits. So, let's see. If if it is truly infinite, I am going to make an infinitely large number. Wait, 
like as long as two of these lines, like these long lines. God, letters are starting to like go in. Why is there a Q in the middle of nowhere? Like what? Okay, there we go. Exactly. It's too large. I knew there had to be a limit, right? I knew there had to be a limit. I knew there's no way it could truly be infinite. Haha. <laughs> Take that, stock overflow. I used to believe you. Why do. Like, how do. What about a number this big? Obviously, yes. Wow, that's a nice computer. <laughs> uh, definitely has like a lot of processing power. Definitely, because if it does like that fast, the average human can't even do like uh two hundred and fifty, like four hundred and eighty-five. The four thousand eight hundred fifty-eight divided by two, and then like two hundred four. 2,429 times 3 plus 1. Like, how? There's no way you can do that that fast or in your head at all. Like, it's just impossible. Oh my god, does it get crashed? I don't know. Wait, did it? No, it's still fine. Haha, <laughs> now I'm at this point, I'm having too much fun with it. Okay then. Uh, bye. This is the end of the video. Tomorrow? Or, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to post a video about doing this exact same thing, but in C++, to see if I can.